glad you're back. I had quite a few people write me, as usual, about the Remington 783. And the 783, as you know, is the Remington discount bolt-action rifle. And I think I've shown you a Ruger American, and I had good words to say about the Ruger American. Uh, I haven't looked at the Savage Axis yet. Um, the 783 is here on the table. So I thought what I would do is, is show you the 783. Apparently this is a very fast selling rifle and uh, the new Remington is quite happy with the sales numbers. I just hear this through the gun world grapevine. Um, I thought it's probably fair uh, to compare the Remington Model 700 to the 783 and quite a lot of you asked a question which was a good one. Should I buy a used Remington Model 700 or a new 783? And the 783 can be purchased just as the rifle or you can buy one of these package deals where it comes with a scope. So I ended up buying the 783 with the scope and I think we'll just move directly to the rifle now. Before I do that, I can tell you I took it to the range and the 783 as expected is an accurate rifle. Um, the one I own anyway. And as I've said before, you'd have to buy one and shoot the one that you actually purchased to know if yours is accurate. And when I say accurate, it was the usual inch and a half at 100 yards, which I think is routine these days. And that, of course, can be brought down with hand loads and maybe a better shooter. Anyhow, the 783 is here. And I took a long time before filming and I was thinking about it quite a lot because these new inexpensive rifles, um, they, they generally all shoot and they generally all do the same things um, to, to cut costs. So what have we got here? We've got kind of an unusual looking bolt action life rifle with a squared off uh, trigger guard. And I'll just tell the story as it is. We've got this polymer stock with a recoil pad. It's some kind of rubber. They haven't been around long enough to know how well they'll last. The 783 uh, follows the 770 and the 710 uh, in the discount Remington line. And the 710, 770 and 783 all come after the 788. And as you know, the Remington 788 was a discount rifle, but it ended up being in some ways better than their flagship rifle, the Remington Model 700. So I don't know, the 710 was a step backwards. There were all kinds of technical problems with the 710, as well as the 770. You may remember, and again, it depends on how much you study guns, but the 710 and 770, the barrel was hydraulically forced into the front receiver ring. This is not necessarily conventional gun making, but it's an established, well-established way of fitting a barrel to a receiver. And actually my HK770, the semi-auto, had the same hydraulically pressed in barrel. Most gunsmiths and most gun people prefer a barrel that's threaded in. The 783 doesn't have the pressed fit 710 barrel or 770 barrel. It has the this sort of the system savage made very popular where you have a a collar and you have to have a a special tool to take off and remove this collar and you set headspace by threading in the barrel and then locking in the headspace with this shoulder and uh, it it works and of course you you see this here we'll look at the remington model 700 in a moment so we talked about the 710, 770, 788, and here we are 783, apparently the best selling of them all. And apparently it's the best selling of all the discount rifles. Even the Ruger falls behind. I, I don't know that to be true, I'm just told that. So here's the trigger guard, and I'll just set it on the table and we'll rely on the excellent um, camera people. This is from my Remington 700 ADL, which I'll show you in a minute. So, I mean, this isn't anything world famous. It's just an aluminum trigger guard. But this is something else, and it's uh, it works. I mean, it's supposed to protect the trigger, and I guess it does that. 
these days these angular shapes seem to be popular. I don't know where the manufacturers find out what the public thinks is attractive, but I guess somebody thought that that's nice. And maybe it is. And um, here's the rifle itself. So we've got, you know, you can picture a production line. Um, you've, you've, you've got to make a stock. You've got a barrel that probably shows up by the container load or you make them in-house, whatever. I'm sure Remington makes these actually. And I, I undid the screws and everything. I took out the magazine, which is here. So the magazine is actually not bad on the 783. It's, um, it's steel. This part is steel. And then the basis is another polymer. And uh, on the Ruger American, it's all polymer. And I'm on most of the others actually. So that's kind of a nice feature. And it locks in place uh, positively. It's not difficult to remove and replace the magazine, which is, I think, a reasonable expectation. And then we've got the action and trigger. I'll show you that in a moment. And here's the here's the stock. Um, you know, it's hard to judge these stocks. So they talk about how it's pillar bedded. If you see those two shiny components, they call those pillars. They're sort of hollow aluminum pipes and the receiver rests on the top of those on, on the top of those so-called pillars um, is it a rigid stock I mean not really I can twist it in my hand does that mean much I'm not sure the styling is this kind of thing they do these days with an angular forend and I think they just want to get a rifle onto the shelf in the store that makes a noise when you pull the trigger and is accurate and and it does all those things so it has this stock and so on um, I hope I'm giving the camera crew enough time anyhow here's the here's the action so you can see uh, it's a very simple action two locking lugs you can see one riding here typical bolt action function. The 710 and the 770 I believe had three locking lugs but again don't quote me you could check on that. Uh, the reason I don't have the 710 or the 770 is both of those rifles I had one of each and they they stopped working not long after I bought them. Uh, no, no high drama or anything they were just cheaply made and uh, now they're in a way collector's items uh, because they were like I said in some ways so poorly made that people kind of value them um, like like Vegas or something like that anyhow it, it does have a um, recoil lug which is nice it's got the the uh, shoulder for setting headspace I'm not using the right terminology it has this popular these days very small opening for uh, the ejection and I, I, guess, I guess I should comment on that people talk about these receivers and how rigid they are because these openings are so small so there's a lot of steel in here and here and yeah maybe they are more rigid I don't know how you measure rigidity I guess there wouldn't be too difficult to do that but I think it's better to have access to what's going on in here if something gets stuck in there namely a cartridge um, just getting at this is is a problem not to mention checking uh, the trigger you know it's one of those tab creatures that's popular these days and then an aluminum housing and I think it's a completely serviceable trigger especially Remington probably spends a lot of time studying triggers to make sure they work and then one of the oddest features to me is this bolt handle um, I don't know. I guess somebody must really like this style. It looks very odd to me. And on the heavy barrel version, which just came out a few months ago, uh, they improved it dramatically. They have a heavy barrel model, which actually looks really nice. It's in 308. And maybe they'll change this around. And of course, there are all kinds of aftermarket things that you can do to replace this coin type bolt handle although it's thicker than that the rest of the rifle is 
just typical inexpensive bolt action design so I hope I covered everything meaningful it's accurate it works the magazines okay the polymer stock is about as the same as the other polymer stocks so it's like a generic kind of um, discount rifle um, I can already tell you I would far sooner have a Remington 788 from 30 years ago than this rifle uh, but you know that's just me so now the people were saying should I buy the U700 here's the 700 and I guess going on to six million copies mil spec it's been used in every kind of situation two locking lugs no clock extractor not control round feed but totally reliable and uh, this one has the so-called bad trigger and I guess there were accidents and problems with it. I don't, I don't dispute that there was something going on with the triggers, but that's been resolved. And just so you can see the point I'm trying to make about access to the chamber, that's the 783. And that's all you get for, for getting the action, or for getting at the chamber, I should say. And I probably can remark that the T3, the teacup, came out with a similar um, access and on the t3x they've they've made made it more open so I personally think for hunting rifle that rigidity is not necessary that you get from this tiny port uh, ejection port I like the 700 it's open it's it's accessible um, something about the steel and I I have no idea I didn't do any Rockwell testing on the 783 but the steel on the Remington 700, I think it speaks for itself. It's an incredibly durable action. And this is an early 700, you can tell, for you gun collectors, by the shape of the bolt handle. And maybe that's not the best bolt handle either. It's certainly not a Winchester Model 70 or a Mauser, but it, it looks not too bad. And everything on the Model 700... Um, except for the claw extractor, the absence of a claw extractor, is the way it should be. And we know from six million copies, and it's been used as a target rifle, it comes in a 40X configuration, it comes in every kind of African configuration. Uh, this is the old style rear sight, um, and they've replaced it now with, well, 20 years ago they replaced it with a inferior sight. I like these old ones. I buy them at the shows when I can. Uh, so that's the metal component. I hope I'm not missing anything there. This is the ADL. It, it came with um, no floor plate and actually uh, in fairness to the 783 here are the guts of the 700 ADL. So uh, instead of th this goes inside the um, stock and I, I won't bother trying to put it back together. And there's the floor plate. Uh, sorry, there's the uh, follower and the spring that pushes the cartridges up. And then we looked at the trigger guard already. And um, then it had three action screws, and so does the 783. And then the ADL was kind of in the same position as the 783. All Remington did was offer a less fancy Model 700. And this is the stock from the ADL. So you got a decent piece of walnut. Um, the inlighting was fine. It's all machine cut, but it's all finished. They tried to make it as waterproof as they could. I'm not sure if the sling swivels are factory, maybe. There's no way that, that you can twist these. I mean, people talk about how wood absorbs water and there's that whole theory out there. Maybe they do. And then I put this on the table uh, this would be the BDL from way back when, 1960-something. So quite similar to the ADL, but you can see there was a, a provision for a floor plate. Just a beautifully made, actually, stock. I don't even mind this impressed checkering. You know, for a long time, people were taking these wood stocks off of their 700s and ADLs, and they were replacing them because of this hysteria that the barrel had to be free floating and that the wood was bending like bamboo and so on. And these were like 25 or $50. The people just almost discarded them. And I thought this is kind of shocking and undervalued. 
and the stocks they were replacing these beautiful wood stocks with they looked just to me terrible um, maybe a wood stock starts to look terrible after you know heavy use you get some nicks or whatever but that's normal that's hunting um, or evidence of use but these other stocks I thought they looked terrible brand new out of the box so I didn't follow what the people were doing but it must have made sense to them which is fine I just bought these so I, I in fact this is another ADL that somebody put a recoil pad on and you still I'm sure can find these and by the way uh, you can just interchange all these parts you would think they'd be fitting but mass production works so um, that's the stock of the ADL here and here we've talked about the bolt the bolt handle uh, this is not a one-piece bolt handle on the 700 it's brazed here some people say that's a weakness uh, this is one of those, this gun, this action has a floating bolt head. It's, it's, theoretically it's not a bad feature because the bolt head will always be perfectly aligned with the base of the cartridge. And I think I see some brazing here. It's hard for me to tell. Maybe one of you can tell me whether that's brazed on. Not, not that there's anything wrong with brazing. But we've got a lot of really discount parts in the 783 and then this came with the scope and i thought i should probably look at it a little bit i can't find any markings it doesn't even say where the scope is made it has a i'm like I was, i'm not an expert but it has an unusual field of view and a strange it's hard to focus this scope at distance i don't know exactly why i also don't know if, if these butler creek these really, uh, really nice Butler Creek lens caps came with the scope. Maybe they did. Anyway, it works at 100 yards. And, you know, 90% of what you're hunting is going to be at 100 yards. Statistically, anyway. Uh, I probably should have mentioned, some of you write me what caliber. So the 780L is a 30 out 6. This is an early version with the short barrel. And it's interesting, it has this cutout here in the top of the action which some people told me is for a stripper clip some people told me it's for magnum cartridges if it is for magnum cartridges i don't know why it's on this gun it's just a 30 on six but maybe it is maybe they used it for you know one action for for their whole line at that time and the 783 uh well there's the, it's just what it is it's um it's a tube with a milled opening i don't know how they make the tube Maybe one of you can tell me. Um, and it doesn't really matter because it's so simple. Um, they really accomplished what they set out to, which was to make a rifle that's profitable even at three or four hundred dollars. And this is this rifle is virtually new. Naturally, I bought it used. Um, and I, I paid 300 something for it. Uh, which rifle? Well, you know the answer already. I'd far rather have a used 700. Um, most hunting rifles even when they look worn they haven't had many rounds fired this rifle the ADL um, it has some kind of character it has the decent stock the steel is good the actions proven the barrels excellent also accurate um, I would say slightly this particular one is slightly more accurate than the 783 uh, even though it's a 30 out 6 and and there is a uh, some evidence that the 30 out 6 as a cartridge is inherently less accurate than the 308. I tend to believe that. Uh, you, I, I don't mind buying a scope for my rifle. My rifles don't have to come with a scope, but if you want a scope included in the package, that seems to be popular. And in a way you get the scope for free. Uh, on the bad side are all the things that, that make this a discount rifle, including this stock, which is nothing to write home about. And um, I guess when you leave the store, um, you've got something that's worth less than you paid. It's just like a car now. And I don't think these are going to be going up in value anytime soon. I can't think of any features that make it a distinctive firearm. It just works, which is, is a lot. That's an achievement and that's a good thing. But beyond that, I don't see any collector value could be wrong the 788 was also a discount but it, I think when people saw the 788 they knew this is a lot more rifle 
than Remington was aware. I hope that's a decent review and in closing I just wanted to show you this is the old 700 with that old shaped bolt handle so if you can keep that image in your mind and then this is the smooth bore 308 that experimental rifle I was working on um, this is the short action and you can see how nice I mean if you want a rigid action this is it but they they didn't compromise here's the new configuration of bolt handle you can see the, it's hard for me to arrange all these parts, but that's the old one, that's the new one. They're both fine. And they're all better than, than the 783. And um, for rigidity, I mean, the short action accomplishes a lot. And it's got a thick receiver ring front and back. So, um, excellent. I, you know, it's easy to say great things about the 700. But now we're not talking about a cheap rifle anymore if you want to buy a new one. So, of course, there's always a place in the market for a discount product. But I still say it's just that people aren't aware how good maybe the U700s are. And there, there are lots to choose from. And quite a few people have written me that um, as a result of this channel, they've become familiar with older rifles. And a lot of times retailers don't know what they have. They also are from generations that you know time passes and they don't study these things but there there are gems in those used racks uh, way better than the 783 but at the same time and in closing uh, Remington did an amazing job if someone told me go and offer a brand new rifle with a scope for $400 um, with with excellent accuracy this would be a challenge and if the trigger is good it's all there it's just a machine, and, and, it, and I don't think they pretend that it's anything other than a machine. I hope that covers the ground that, that I wanted to cover and that you should hear about, and we'll compare the 783 and the uh, Ruger American. That was a request, and the Axis. Sorry, I'm a little slow with those things. And um, I'll get a 788 on the table. And you, you'll be able to see, or you can check right now, just Google it, and put a bunch of images or whatever. The 788 is such an amazing rifle. Um, accuracy per dollar, I think the 788 probably has the highest quotient on the used market. It's an amazing gun. And I know that from owning many of them. So um, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, please push the subscribe button uh, right away after you watch this video it makes a big difference to me and to be able to bring you these videos and um, subscribe to patreon uh, we cover a lot of stuff there that we don't cover here and you can access me personally more so and more quickly and ask for uh, custom reviews of things which I'm happy to accommodate so that's it you all take care out there and we'll see you next time thanks for watching